Joe, and I'm here with you at um, what we call MMP headquarters. That's for the Mississippi Music Project. Um, it's also our home. As uh, many of you know, um, this uh, the home has been haunted, and we've had some haunted items here, and we've had a lot of interest in these um, in our investigations, and we've had a lot of interest in um, what we call the the haunted journal. Here, it's the story of Annie and her mother. Uh, I'll get into that in a minute, but. A lot of you had wanted more of a, a background on what goes on here. And um, I wanted to touch on the equipment that, that we bought just to try to keep up with the things that's happened here. And um, I'll just go over some of that. I'll go over some of the evidence and uh, some of the findings by other investigative uh, teams that have came in and uh, kind of where we're um, going with this and and uh, how we feel about the whole situation. <clears throat> um, I've got various things out here in front of me. Um, first of all, this is a crucifix with holy water. I keep it on the uh, the journal. Um, it's a protector. Uh, even though that we don't believe that there is evil in the journal, uh, we do take precautions to protect against evil entities and things of that nature. Um, this is this is the haunted journal. Uh, this is a, a journal from the 1800s. I'll be able to give you the exact date here in a second if I can see it. It's a little dark. It was 18, I think it was 1858. Let's see if I can see it in the, the candle. I'll try to put the date in the um, in the in the description. Um, it's really really right light handwriting. This has kind of faded over the years. This is an old book. Um, anyways, this book was a gift um, from this little girl named Annie. Uh, she gave this to her mother for her birthday, which was September twenty fifth. And again, I can't read the uh, the date, um, but it says to Mama, love Annie on her birthday. And Annie was 12 years old. <clears throat> and that's all here in the, uh, it's hard to open because I don't want to brick the, the cover, but that's, it's on the front page talking about how the, the journal was gifted to her mother. Uh, basically, this journal is just filled, filled with information uh, from the, uh, the early 1800s and on through. It's got notes from Annie's mom. It's got newspaper clippings. It's got, um, poems and and just a little bit of everything that you would probably journal from back in that time um, it's really interesting and it would take me a long time to go over everything um, that's on here but it is an interesting book um, we did purchase this <clears throat> online it was an antique sale and i'd always wanted a, an older well we had always wanted an older um a book from the 1800s and this just intrigued me it was I was we were drawn to it for some reason and um, uh, we bought it and uh, since we've had this book um, I will say before we had this book that there if, I, if you would ask me if I believed in ghosts or spirits the answer would be absolutely not I think it's a bunch of just hogwash um, made up stuff that people talk about didn't believe in anything uh, ghost or, or um, hauntings or spiritually related like that. Um, <clears throat> this just changed my mind. Um, things started happening as soon as we brought the book into the home. We actually lived into a different a different home, and um, uh, just a few of the instances we've had there uh, at our prior home. Uh, my wife was in a bed that started shaking <clears throat> violently. Uh, we would often see shadows, shadow figures, and um, uh, abnormal uh, light anom anomalies, anomalies, and um, would hear things. But at that early point, we didn't really understand or, or know what was going on. Um, we didn't even really attribute everything that was going on to this book. But as more and more stuff started happening, and um, we noticed that it's when we had the book out and open or on display, uh, things would happen. Um, we moved into this home uh, about 10, 11 years ago. And um, I don't know if this, this house had any uh, 
findings or spiritual stuff in it prior. Um, but it seemed like once we got here, things um, happened much more frequently. And um, it just got to a point where um, one of the first steps we did was call in uh, paranormal teams. <clears throat> and we had more than one paranormal team come in. Um, and I still didn't believe at that point. I really didn't. But the teams came in. And we had one team come out even twice. Um, the first time they came out, they put brand new batteries in all their equipment. Uh, they had high tech gear, uh, same, some of the same stuff that I have here, um, but they had even uh, other equipment that I haven't, I don't have. And um, it was just like every time they would turn a piece of equipment on and they would leave it between the bar and our kitchen and um, this is the living room, dining room area. And if you go to the left here, you go into what we call the Elvis room, or it's a game room. It's uh, got a pool table and stuff in there. But we always, they were picking up a lot of things that was happening between the Elvis room, through this dining room area, living room area, to the master bedroom, uh, which is off that way. And it was basically all in this one area. It seemed like there was just a lot of stuff going on. Not so much in the other parts of the house. <clears throat> but again, the, the book stayed here in this area. Um, we never really put the book back in the, um, the back areas of the house. But uh, the brand new batteries and equipment, uh, things would die. Um, they got some uh, good video evidence, um, reviewed it here. When they got back to their office to save the, uh, the videos and everything, everything was gone. It was either corrupt videos they couldn't get to it or the videos were erased um whatever the case was um so they were stunned they didn't know what to think of that um with the battery draining they uh, they say that spirits uh, ghosts pull energy from um things such as batteries or uh, appliances or whatever they're plugged in anywhere they can get energy from and that's why they believe the uh, the batteries and the computer laptops and and the batteries and all them things drained so they actually came out a second time. Um, we did some um, trying to communicate with the spirit using uh, K2 meters and mel meters and SB7 spirit boxes. Um, got great, uh, great uh, results from those. We were able to communicate with some spirits and had the spirits do things on command. Um, we've had other investigators in here. It's all the same. They basically, every time somebody comes in here, you're, I wouldn't say you're going to get evidence every time, but it's just about a guaranteed thing that if you come in here in our home and you come with the equipment and you're respectful, um, you'll get some evidence. It will happen. But, um, yes, this is the, this is the, the journal that was given to Annie's mom. We believe her name is Geneva. Um, Annie gave this to her mom, Geneva. And, um, there's a poem here where we actually keep it open to. Um, this poem was written uh, April 26th, 1882. This poem was written, it's called Dear Annie. <clears throat> what I'll probably try to do is I can't read it in here in the, in the dark right now. My eyes can't pick up this writing, but I'll either uh, type it up and put it in the description of the video, or I'll make another video with some lights on where I could read this um, poem to you. But basically the poem talks about, um, unfortunately, Annie, the one that gave this book to her mother, passed away. <clears throat> we did some research and we believe she passed away um, from like a, um, a fever, uh, like scarlet fever or yellow fever, uh, which was common back in the 1800s. Um, if you go a few pages back, you also find out that it wasn't just Annie that died. It was some of her siblings. She had a couple brothers and they passed too. So... Um, Annie and her brothers all died from this uh, in the same uh, amount of, in just days period of time and her mom was really distraught and wrote some poems and wrote some other things um, about the family in this book so it's a, it's a pretty sad period of time in this book and we always leave it open to that dear Annie poem <clears throat> uh, wherever we display it that, that page is always always open so um with the investigations and things that's happened, um, what the final 
result has always been from any investigator, or anybody we, we talk to. Um, we believe at times that there is, um, I shouldn't say evil spirits, but some spirits that like to try to scare or, or, or trick you, um, mess with you. We don't know if that's related to anything in this book. But the thing that we do, and we always have gotten responses to when we try to communicate with the spirits, is when we talk to Annie. And uh, we talk to Annie quite often. We don't believe that she's dangerous. We don't believe that um, she's here to scare or harm anybody. Um, we've talked to her numerous times. And what we seem to find out is Annie is attached to this book. And she's attached to it because she wants to protect it, I should say. Um, she wants to stay with the book and make sure it's taken care of, that these writings and, and this legacy of her mom and her family is protected. So we believe that we're talking to Annie just about any time that we're talking to spirits here when we have this book out. Um, Annie does like to talk to us. And um, I decided to do this video on Halloween as an experiment myself because uh, you always hear that a lot of people think that um, during Halloween, um, spirits are out more or it's easier to communicate with them <clears throat> i don't think that's true i think that i could turn on these things these equipment tonight and not get any results and then i could turn them on and i might get a, a lot of uh, different results from the equipment that i have i don't know that's one of the things i want to find out tonight since it is halloween i don't know if ghosts have a a clock and they know that it's 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 a holiday i really don't know and i really don't believe that uh, but we're going to see tonight. We're going to um, run some equipment and uh, see what we come up with. But okay, that is the um, the journal. I'm going to move this over to the side just for a second. Um, right here in front of me is a um, antique Ouija board. Um, I'm not a big fan of Ouija boards. Uh, we do have one. Um, we have had some things happen with this board. We have set it out on a table with nothing around it. And um, for periods of time, um, it would move. It would move during the night when nobody was up and nobody was around it. And um, I started, when it was moving around, I started noticing it. And I started writing down the letters that would show. And I've got them written down somewhere. I don't have it here with me right at the moment. Um, but the letters didn't make any sense to me. They didn't spell any words or anything that I could come up with. Um, so I've had it put up for a little while. But I might get it out and see if that'll happen again. Um, but yeah, it. I would go to sleep, wake up the next morning, and it would be on a, a different letter. Write that letter down. A couple nights later, wake up, it's on a different letter. But it didn't make no sense. It didn't spell any words. Um, I don't know what it meant. Um, so yeah, basically that's the, uh, the Ouija board. Um, I'm not a big fan of, of using this. I'm, uh, Especially with two people, uh, you never know. You never know truly if someone's trying to move it around with you or not. But um, I was kind of impressed with the fact that it moved by itself, and that's not the only thing that moves in this house. We have things move in this house all the time. Uh, what they call um, poltergeist um, type haunting. We've had um, multiple witnesses to things being thrown in the house. Uh, there's a quick story when we had. Um, it was me, my wife, and my daughter. We were sitting in our master bedroom. And I had a cell phone, which I'll just use this um, SB7 as a cell phone. We had this uh, a cell phone, an iPhone, sitting on the end table. And it was in the middle of the table. There was three of us in the room. Um, and we're just sitting there talking. The next thing we know, we hear a smash to the ground. And we find the iPhone halfway across the room. Glass all smashed out of it. All three of us were in there. And... It wasn't like it fell. There was none of us that threw it, uh, but the phone levitated uh, halfway across the room and slammed onto the floor and, and smashed. And I still have the iPhone that's put up. Um, but that's one event where I can, you know, we talk to you about it, like a poltergeist uh, type happening. We do have things move around. We have things fall off shelves. We have things move in cabinets. Um, it's um, much more than I can go through in, in, in this video, so. But just to let you know, we do have poltergeist material where, where um, things move around in the house. And it's happened. We've seen it. Um, if you hear dogs barking or, or 
one of our dogs is eating right now, so you'll hear that crunching. Um, that's what's hard about um, doing some of these investigations with the dog in the house. They are, they do make noise. Um, so please excuse that. Okay, a few of the devices here. Um, one is a infrared uh, thermometer. You can shine this anywhere in a room and give you a reading. Um, it comes in real handy. Um, you've often, I'm sure you've often heard that when a spirit's in a room, uh, things tend to get cold or um, sometimes report, you hear reports that they get real hot with like a demonic um, entity being nearby. Um, so with this device, able to click it on in an instant and um, detect temperatures and um, have caught some interesting stuff with this. Um, not so often on the, on the uh, temperatures, but uh, have gotten some interesting happenings using the thermometer that you know where you can tell there's a cold or hot spot. I always like to turn off the um, the heat and air when I do these investigations here at the house so we know that there's nothing circulating that would uh, you know show up on the um, the device. Um, this right here is a ultra sensitive digital voice recorder. We use these for picking up EVPs. This is the Tascom. Um, I think it's a DR40X. Um, it's a really good piece of equipment. Uh, we have gotten some um, EVPs or electronic voice phenomenon. Um, but most of our evidence happens with magnetic fields and SLS cameras. But this is a good piece of equipment. Uh, we have heard different voices and stuff come through as an EVP using this device. This right here is a K2 EMF meter. It picks up electromagnetic fields. Uh, K2 has been used for years um, by um, paranormal investigators. This works really well. It's really simple to use if you tell a spirit to just kind of get close to it, it'll pick up their electric magnetic field, which is believed that a, a, um, a spirit puts off. And uh, this device has worked really well. I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna leave it running just for a few minutes and, and we'll see if anything happens there. Um, this right here is the uh, mail meter. You might've seen this on TV with some of the ghost shows like Ghost Adventures, which um, I do love that show and watch it often. Uh, but this is the mail meter. Let's see if we can get it turned on here. Okay, it shows electromagnetic fields and it also picks up temperature readings. Like it says, it's 69.1 degrees Fahrenheit at this point. Um, similar to this, it will pick up the uh, magnetic fields and the milligauss reading. And we'll set that right there and I'll just kind of monitor it. I know you can't see it, but I'll monitor it while we're going through some of these things. Um, this is the biggest piece of equipment I have. It's also one of the most expensive. You've probably seen this on TV shows too. This is what's called an SLS camera. Um, what it is, is it uses a, uh, an Xbox camera. And what it'll do is, I don't know if it is picking me up right now or whatever, but if there is a, a person that walks in front of it, you'll see a stick figure appear on the screen. Um, it's also believed that well, with the light that we can't see that it'll pick up spirits and show up as stick figures on this camera as well um, great piece of equipment this has really worked um, we've picked up spirits with it before I, I love this piece of equipment it's it's, a, it's one of my favorite things to use um, it does work um, had great results with this some of the videos i've posted with the sls camera which you'll see on the youtube channel um, but it's great piece of equipment uh, i believe it works great And the last thing that we have here, well, this is just an external speaker, which I'll turn on. And this is what's called the um, SB7 Spirit Box. I'll plug the speaker into it. If I can see it. All right, there we go. What this does is this little box scans radio frequencies at a high rate of speed. It can do a forward scan, it can do a backward scan. Um, I always like to go in reverse myself. Let me turn it on so you can kind of hear what this thing does. Now it's scanning frequencies in reverse. Uh, had the antenna removed so it kind of helps uh, not pick up a lot of radio stations. You do hear some come through occasionally. Uh, but the idea is you can ask questions of spirits 
and um, if you hear something come through and it's over one or two or maybe multiple frequency sweeps that you can hear, uh, that's generally, I believe that a spirit can be talking through this box to you. Um, it does come in handy. It's a pretty neat device. <coughs> and I just turned it off and it gets kind of loud. But that's the uh, SB7 spirit box. Uh, also used on a lot of the TV programs you see on TV. I know Ghost Adventures uses that quite often. All right, so far I haven't had anything happen with the Mel meter or the K2. Um, let me think what else I can tell you. That was the devices. I gave you kind of a background on the uh, the Haunted Journal. Um, some of the things, other things that does happen here is we do see a lot of like shadow figures. Um, it seems to move from one room to another. Um, well, let me tell you about a couple of events that's happened in the, uh, in the master bedroom <clears throat> where we sleep. We had one morning where, um, me and my wife were, were sleeping and we heard someone at the bedroom door and, um, we just assumed it was our daughter, Alexis. And we said, you know, what are you doing out there? Come on in. And, um, the door opened and, uh. Uh, Lexi wasn't there. Um, saw a figure, but it wasn't our daughter. Let's put it that way. Uh, we believe it was Annie. As a young girl, we've seen this girl in our house numerous times. Everybody that, that I think has been here has had uh, sightings of this girl. Um, like a young teenage girl. Uh, she's probably anywhere, like I said in the book, she was 12. When she gave the book, she was just slightly older than that when she died. So it's probably the figure that we see is, is like a little girl. I don't know, maybe 14, 15 years old or so. Maybe a little younger. But we have seen her in this house numerous times. And um, we believe that was her at the door. Also, um, I was awakened, awoken, however you want to say it, uh, from my sleep in the, uh, the master bedroom one night. And... Uh, when I woke up, I looked up and I thought it was Lexi, again, my daughter, standing over me, but it wasn't. When I first woke up, I saw this um, like little girl standing over me and just kind of like um, looking down at me. And um, by the time I got my senses together and everything, she, um, she just vanished. Again, we think that was Annie, um, but it was so real, so... Um, just uh, those are the kind of things that has happened to me that it's kind of made me more of a believer. Um, I do believe that we do have the spiritual and ghost things happening here with the book with Annie now. Um, you would ask me, like I said, that 10 years ago, I would have laughed at you. Would have never said that that stuff is, is real. Um, we have picked up stick figures on our kitchen bar. We picked up stick figures. Here at the table, we picked up stick figures in the um, on the SLS. I'm talking about in the game room, and um, gosh, I'm trying to think of. We've had so much happen that it's um, it's hard to remember everything truly to sit here and just go on in a video uh, about the different things. Um, now, my involvement with this book is um, a lot of people have wanted me to get rid of the book. Paranormal investigators, family, and everyone else I know, they believe that I have an attachment, is what they call it. <clears throat> I won't let this book out of my sight, or I definitely won't let it out of the house. There's times when I leave the house, um, but I always put make sure the book is, is, is locked up in a cabinet. Uh, I protect this thing like crazy. Um, some people wanted me to send this to Zach Bagans at the um, Dawn Museum in Vegas. Uh, just to get it away from me. And um, while I know he would take care of it, I know it probably deserves to be there, I, I won't let it go. Uh, if, I, if I have an attachment, I, I guess I do. Um, <clears throat> but I feel like I have to protect this book. I always take care of it. I always make sure it's safe. I don't let anything happen to it. Um, I think that it has affected me over the years dealing with this. And... Um, maybe a little mentally, but I feel like this is 
part of who I am now that I have to protect this book, and that's the attachment. Um, again, I won't get rid of it. I've had people tell me I need to just kind of let it go. I just, I won't do it. I refuse to. Um, this book is, is mine and it's not going anywhere. Um, I'll let people come investigate it or check it out. And I've, I've posted some stuff online about it and everything, but I, I won't let it out of my sight. I won't let anything happen to it. And I think that's what Annie wants. I think that's what she's tried to convey to me and talk to me about many times. And I've promised Annie that I will take care of the book and uh, take care of her and her mom through this book. And um, that's what I do. Uh, I won't let anybody harm this, harm this book. <clears throat> I'm still researching the book. I've got it tabbed out with different things. Uh, um, there's different people it talks about in the book that you can actually look up and find information about. And there's um, some doctors in here and some generals. I'm sorry, my, we have two puppies and they're in there uh, making noise right now. We have two hairless crests, Chinese crests. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the, um, the story of this. Um, I think I'll end this video right here for a minute. I'll get the camera and, um, I'll have to hold the camera while I do it, but we'll, um, we'll try to talk to the spirits and see if we can get anything, um, happening that way. Um, just to see how it'll work on Halloween night. Um, if you have any questions of me, um, definitely. Uh, put a comment down there. I'll try to answer your questions. Uh, if there's something you want me to investigate or or um, ask of Annie or, or try to do here, I, I will do my best to make sure it happens. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just let me know. So I'll go ahead and end this video for now and uh, we'll do some investigations right here at the table and uh, see if we can get any evidence. Thank you for watching. Okay, I did turn the lights on for a minute. I wanted to um, read this poem to you. Uh, let me see. I'm going to put this here just so you see the book, but I'm going to read over the top of it. The poem is called Dear Annie. Our pleasant household circle has a vacant place. The merry laughter and cheering tone, the bright young face has left us. A, a new love and home with new friends around. I know that dear old home with all its nights and sound, lights and sounds, will never be near. It's hard to read some of this old writing. Yet it is, yet it is hard to part with one so dear and we, the left at home, uh, something keep good cheer must keep good cheer for one another tis this in every household um, love something evermore but find a home forever with the heavenly door no more to part Oh, how joyous we that, that with by death unbroken is our home circle. Um, our gratitude be spoken in, fev in fervent, fervent, prayer, fervent prayer, April 26, 1882. Um, that's about Annie's passing, I'm talking about how the light and the sounds has left the home and how it'll never be the same. Um, again, that was April 26th, 1882. Uh, we believe that that's close to the time where um, Annie died. Here's a poem she wrote about Son's Room, and this talks about the passing of a couple of the brothers. That was November 11th, 1882. You know, that might be a good night to investigate. Um, November 11th, 1882, that's coming up. But there is more talk about um, the passing, a lot of newspaper clippings. Um, but yeah, I wanted to read that poem. That's basically what it says. I'm sorry I didn't read it ex exactly word for word. It's hard to read that writing, but I do have it saved uh, word for word, um, you know, using what we found with multiple people reading it so that it was accurate. 
I can probably post that. I think it's on the um, the website, but I can probably post it in the description of this video and you know, with the uh, with this video, so you can read it word for word. But anyways, oh, and let me get the uh, the year to Mama from Annie on her birthday, September twenty fifth, eighteen sixty eight, in Syracuse, New York. Annie was twelve years old. Okay, I'm back. We're gonna get back down here to the table. Got all the lights turned off. <clears throat> we are going to see if we can get any evidence. It is Halloween 2021. So we'll uh, pull these couple devices closer here. That's the K2. And this is the Mel meter. Let me see if I can get some more some light around this so we can so we can see what's going on. It is dark in here and this doesn't have night vision. All right. Let's start off by um, seeing if Annie's here. And I've got the, uh, let me bring the journal closer actually. Bring the journal over here. I know it's hard to see, but we'll put the journal here next to the, the K2 and the uh, Mel meter. Annie, if you're here with us tonight, can you give us a sign? Can you come over here and, and get near one of these devices? And um, if you would, uh, make this little light blink. You've done it numerous times. I'd like to see you do it again. Tonight is Halloween. Do you know that it's Halloween? I invite you to come over here and, and uh, show me that you're here. Can you come over here and make one of these devices light up? this takes patience um, doesn't always happen right when you want it to Annie are you here you hear my little puppies they're only two weeks old two weeks and a couple days old and they're um, like I said earlier hairless Chinese Cresteds you can hear them crying cooing in the background um, so that's what that noise is you're hearing Annie, can you come over here and make this light up? Or if there is any spirits here, <clears throat> can you come light up this device? You can use some of the energy from the batteries. You can use some of my energy if you need it. But we'd like to see if you can make this device light up. Annie, please come over here. I have the book right here. I've been taking really good care of it. I do my best. If you like me keeping the book and keeping it taken care of, can you light that up for me? Is there anybody here tonight? push the stuff away a little bit and put it out here a little bit further blow that candle out just have this one going if there's any spirits in this room can you please come over all you have to do is get near these two devices they won't harm you in any way if you'll just get near them two devices hopefully they will they'll light up and um, show us that you're here Can you do that, please? Come on, if you'd come over here and please light this device up, it would be greatly appreciated. I'm gonna step back even further. Get blurry, let me get up there a little closer again. If there's anybody here, can you please light up this device? anyone here if you're a female can you please light up that light right there all you gotta do is get near that little green light 
and it'll start flashing different colors. It's really easy to do, doesn't hurt. If this is a female spirit, can you light that up? This is a male spirit. Can you show me that you're male by lighting that device up? <laughs> Do you like staying here at the MMP headquarters, our home? Are you trapped here? Do you know that you are dead? Is it nice on the other side after you die? Is it a good thing? Is there happiness? Please feel free to come over here and communicate with us. Well, y'all, this is sometimes how it goes. We might not get any inf information tonight. Um, I could turn the cameras back on in 30 minutes and this thing would be going nuts. But this is, um, when something doesn't happen, this is what I, I try to tell people and that's that this is how we know that these devices work because they only work when they're picking up on something. Um, if there's nothing here at the moment, they're not gonna pick up on anything. Again, I'm gonna turn this camera off in just a minute. I'm gonna give you a last chance to, to come over here. You could use just all the energy that you have, any energy that you need, and just light those lights up or change those numbers on that other machine. Okay, I see that we're not going to get any evidence tonight. Not right now, anyway. Um, I'll go ahead and end this video. Uh, this was an experiment. I wanted to see if there was going to be anything different with it being Halloween. Um, evidently, there is no difference if it's any other day, any other night compared to Halloween. I didn't see any difference. Uh, we haven't had anything abnormal happen around here around the house tonight. Um, but again, tomorrow it could be off the charts. Last chance, can you please light that light up? Annie, Geneva, can you come over here and light that up? I'm gonna turn, I have to turn this off if you're, if you're not gonna communicate with me. Okay. Well, everybody, I appreciate you. Um, hanging with me through this investigation and, and talking about the um, what's going on with the uh, the haunted journal and here at our home. Um, thank you for watching. I'll continue to try to post post evidence as I get some. It's been quite a while since I had um, had used this equipment again. I take breaks from it every once in a while. Um, but I will get it out a little more often and see if I can get some more evidence for you. Um, I'd like to close by saying, Annie, if you're here, uh, we appreciate you. I'm trying to take my very good care of this book, just like you've asked me to. Um, I appreciate that you're here and then give you, you give me evidence from time to time. I appreciate you talking to me. Geneva, if you're here, it's the same thing. I appreciate when you do talk to me. And we'll, uh, we'll try to communicate with you here soon. Again, Annie and Geneva, or any other spirits that may be here. I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, of course, I appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. Uh, of course, like the videos. There's a lot of other videos on here that you may like and enjoy. But please subscribe. I appreciate you. And uh, we'll be back uh, here soon and hopefully get some more evidence. Thank you for watching.